Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Joyous Throw by Marianne Forrestal and today we're going to be working on this particular one. It has a bit of texture to it, a little bit of a Christmas theme but if Christmas is not your thing I think this is still an amazing afghan that you'll see the texture just working it really quite lovely. Let's dive into this pattern a little bit harder and let's get involved today. So we're gonna be covering some elements today to do the three dimensional texture that you will see in this particular project. There is three colors and it's Christmas. Uh, you have mistletoe, cherry red, patty green. You can decide to do whatever you want with the Christmas or make it another seasonal afghan. You'll notice that the color changing. I just like highlighting it for me. We're gonna be repeating two through nine over and over and over in order to get to the end. So I just wrote down the color A is row number two because you have to change and so it gives you the indications on when you need to change your colors really not a hard thing. Multiples of eight is what it's gonna be. So if you wanna change the size, don't wanna have this particular size but wanna make it more narrow or bigger, multiples of eight. So eight, 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 eight and when you're satisfied just stop and then begin. So we're gonna be using Red Heart Super Saver today and I'm going to actually just be using Red Heart Heat Wave just as a swatching sample. Um, I like more of a fun Christmas uh, concept, not necessarily red, white, and green. I like the blues and I like the grays and all of that jazz and that's what you'll see in today's sample. So without further ado let's get joyous together and let's begin to do this afghan. As we begin today's tutorial you're going to notice that it's really busy in the pattern that you really don't get a concept but this is what it looks like. So there's a repeat patterns of two through nine. This is two through nine. So when you go to do it again you'll have blue and then the pink and then blue and pink and these gray here just keeps overlaying it. It almost looks plaid in many ways. So this is what we're aiming for today and so without further ado let's continue our tutorial. So let's begin. We're gonna create a slip knot. This is classified as an easy level. So remember there's videos for beginner levels if you would like that here on our channel. You can chain 120 if that's your thing if you would like it exactly or you can go in multiples of eight. I'm just gonna do three multiples of eight. So just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's one multiple and then I'm going to go again because it's not big enough. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and big enough yes or no if not continue. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Once you're happy with the width of this just stop and then we're gonna start then on row number two or sorry row number one. <laughs> so let's just jog our way across this chain and we're gonna go fourth chain from the hook. So just count it back. So one, two, three, go to the fourth and get the back hump of the chain. It looks nicer and you'll do the fourth chain from the hook and you'll start to double crochet into that one. So once you do the back hump of one the chain will stay turned upside down and so the next chain will be upside down and ready for you to play with. Just double crochet yourself all the way across. This is row number one. Once you get all the way across your chain you're just gonna double crochet right to the very end and in this case we're ending the color. So in order to end the color what I'm strongly recommending is that you just cut your yarn strand and just pull the loop through like that don't carry your yarn and just take this yarn strand and throw it through a tapestry needle. It just takes a moment or so. Just throw it through. Now this one that I'm showing you with the loop on the end people ask me all the time what is it? I'm not sure. I got it at an independent uh, craft store near me and uh, I don't even remember the, the brand of it. So just going into the stitch work just pull that item through that tail through. When you pull it you wanna pull it so it's gonna be lost but you don't wanna change the shape. So just go across once and then slightly different path for the second time and the third time is a charm and it will finally lock in. The project can never stretch in three directions at the same time therefore this should never fall out on you in your lifetime. Never say never but that's kind of the truth. So you may wanna do this also with the starting strands. So let me uh, secure that and I'll be back in just a moment. Now that I secured the tail end in, so it was here and I finished. So just leave it to the back side here. So it should be on this side of the work depending if you're right or left handed. Let's move on to color A. So I use C as my gray. So A I'm going to use as blue. So let's begin row number two. I'm gonna show you a little trick. This is not in the pattern. This is one of those experienced things. Create a slip knot and throw it onto the hook. Go into the very first stitch that you have. So the very first one and I want you to yarn over and pull through but don't pull it through that first loop right away. So you have two loops and then pull through two. That's a standing single crochet. 
If you don't like that you could, could pull through, slip stitch, chain one, then single crochet but this kind of makes it faster. Lay down that straggler so it's on top of the line and apply one single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way across. Drag this underneath the stitches for about two inches and then you don't have to weave in any ends. It'd be awesome right? You don't like ends. Um, so let's begin. So once it's over enough just let it fall to the back side and then you can trim that out later and therefore that is right underneath your stitches. So let's continue all the way. This is row number two. We're not gonna get rid of this yarn as we move on to row number three next. If you're new to crochet don't forget that turning chain is actually a stitch. So just go right into the chain work itself. Don't go into a space. Go right into the chain and then that's the last stitch. So if you're making triangles you're probably missing that stitch. Let's turn our work and do row number three. Chain three which will count as a double crochet. So the very next stitch is the, the, the guy next door or the person next door. So you're just gonna double crochet yourself all the way across for row number three. One double crochet in each of the stitches and I'll see you at the end of row number three and we're not changing this yarn again. We have one more spout of doing it with this blue. Let's continue. Coming up to the end of row number three we're just going to double crochet into the very last one. And we're not done with this color. We're gonna go one more time. So turning it and doing row number four. Just chain up one and single crochet into the same one. So we didn't do a standing single crochet because it's already attached and we're not changing color. And all we're just gonna do is just apply one single crochet in each of the stitches all the way to the other side and we will be changing color once we get there. I'll see you there in just a moment. So we're just gonna come all the way to the end. Don't forget that turning chain. That is one of those stitches and then that's the very end. So this is the end of row number four. We're gonna change now to the color C as in cat and then we're just gonna get rid of this yarn. Just weave it in and let's begin to do row number five next. So continuing into row number five we're now going to go back to the color C. So this is the first time that we'll do it. So just going in and you need to go to the first stitch and attach through and then you're gonna chain three which will count as a double crochet. In the next stitch and you'll see that I'm gonna bury this as I go is that I'm going to do a double crochet and then we're gonna do the three dimensional work now. So we want to do a front post triple treble. It's a big word but it actually in fact it's really quite simple. To do these if you wrap once it's a double, wrap twice it's a treble, wrap three times it's a double treble and wrap four it's a triple treble. So just remember wrap four times. Coming back all the way down to where it was here four rows below to this double crochet you've done two already so that's considered these two. So go to the third one and you're going to insert from the side and back out to the other side and then yarning over pulling it through and then yarn over pull through twos all the way back to the top. Okay, that's a front post triple treble. We're gonna do that one more time. So wrap four times. So let's count. So one, two, three, and four and come into the friend right next door four rows below and then pull through and then pull through two, 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 two all the way to the top. Now back here on the top here the two stitches that were next are considered these two that are sitting in front. So ignore those and go to the third one and for the next six in a row we're going to apply one double crochet into each. So let's count those out. So two, three, four, five, and six and let me show you a trick. To find the next one we're gonna come back down for two of these that we just did the triple trebles and you're gonna go one, two, three, and four. If you're not sure count over and skip over the next six double crochets from this one. So it's the next one. One, two, three, four, five, six and go to the seventh and then that's where that's gonna be and you're just gonna do your twos all the way back to the top and then do the friend next door. So wrapping four times. So you're doing two in a rows. This is creating texture. And again those two just count says the next two in the line so ignore those and do the next six. And you're gonna do that all the way across until you get to your edge. And I'll show you the edge in just a moment because we're almost there. So put me on pause now and then when you're ready to resume 
then we'll just show you how to do the edge which will be just moments from now. For those that are ready to move on to the edge, once you have your six here, we're going to do two more of these. So wrapping four times and if you're not sure, which I'm not, I'm just gonna count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, go to the seventh and if it's on the edge, it's the fourth one away. That will also help you to know that too. And you're gonna do your twos all the way back and you'll have to do the friend next door. So wrap one, two, three and four and then do the friend next door and this will leave you two double crochets unaccounted for. So remember those two counts as the next two in the lineup and there's two left and you will double crochet into the final two and then that will be the end of that. And we wanna change to the color B and this is important because this is the color uh, changing. So color B is when we're going to then move into row number six but you have to repeat rows number two through nine. So when we get to the end of nine we're gonna start back up at two and two is gonna be using the color A. But in this case because we're doing a sequence of two through nine number six will actually be using the color B. Let's uh, continue to do that next. So color B. So moving on the pattern we go to rows number six, seven and eight and it says repeats two, three and four. But remember it said to change to B before doing number six. So B is the new color here and in my case it's the pink. So I wanna come to the top of the first double crochet and I wanna pop it through and do a standing single crochet because it's just easier. And I'm going to single crochet myself all the way across this line. Again I'm going to be burying in the loose ends from both of the gray that I left behind and the new color that I'm adding and it saves having to sew later. And once it's satisfied just put it to the side and then just trim it. Single crochet all the way across for row number six which is the repeat of row number two. When you get to the end of row number six don't forget that turning chain is part of the stitch work so just go into that one to finish. Row number seven we're gonna keep the same color. So seven and eight is the same color. In this case it will be pink and we're going to switch back to doing a double crochet. So you chain up three and the very next stitch is right next door and you're going to double crochet yourself all the way across for row number seven. So please do this and I will be back in just a moment to finish up row number seven. So in double crocheting right to the very end turn your work we're gonna do row number uh, eight. So it's just like what you already know. So chain up one, one single crochet all the way across. But when we get all the way to the end of this row we need to change the color and it says on the instructions for row number nine repeat row five. That means that we have to prepare for the color change. So we're gonna go back to the color um, um, B. Sorry, go, yeah going back to the color C. So in my case it will be the gray. So what is dropping down in the front of this will always be the same color. And that's completely your choice as well as for colors. So continue all the way across and let's change out our color for the final part of the repeat number nine. At the end of row number eight just going into the final chain let's get rid of this color and let's move on and we're gonna do the final one number nine which will be the end of the, the repeat. Get rid of this and we're gonna move back and it's the same color that's doing the drop down. If you've been bearing in your tails you can get rid of those at any time if they're in your way and uh, you can just trim them out if you've been burying them. And now we're gonna use the gray and then use that gray to pop down in front. So let's do that next. So let's finish off with the end of row number nine which is the end of the repeat and you're going to attach it to the first single crochet and you're going to chain a total of three which counts as a double. So one, two and three. So we're going to then double crochet into its friend next door and then you're gonna come down four rows below. So you just gotta count one okay and then coming down and it's around the same one. Do you see that? So you're just gonna wrap four times. Sorry I was just thinking for a second. Wrap four times and wrap around the same one and come all the way back up. See and that will keep that flow going. So wrap four times and then go to the next one. So it's still a front post treble. It's just wrapped around the other one that's already there and then that will count as the next two that are in the lineup and remember how many double crochets you're going to do next. You're going to do a total of six. 
So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So once that's confirmed, your next two are sitting waiting, waiting for you down there. So one, two, three, four, going wrapping around and come all the way back up to the top and then do this friend next door. It's almost like a plaid that it's creating. So those count as those two. So start in the, the third one and just do six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And you'll continue then that all the way across until you get to the edge. So then you'll be jumping down every time you have a chance. So in the final edge here, you're just, after you get your six done, you're gonna jump down and you're gonna do all the way back up. And you'll be left with two stitches left at the very end. So let's count as the next two in the row and then the final two are the end. And this is the end of row number five. Just like you see. But in this case, this because it's a, technically the end of row number nine, you wanna go back then and start row number two through nine all over again. So row number two is going back to the color A. So you wanna start with your color A. So in my case it will be the blue and then you'll do this blue section and then the pink and then the blue and then the pink. When you have the length that you want, it's telling you to finish on row number five. That means that there will actually be a blue on the other side. So the blue starts and then the blue section here will be the very end. And then we're gonna continue then to um, do this. So you wanna end on row number five. And it says um, do not change the color at the end of the last row which is number five. So in this case it will be gray. So what we want to do is that we want to go all the way around this particular item. So we're looking currently at the right side of the project and so we just wanna equally single crochet down the edge through the bottom and then back up and then back to the top. To do this, all you're just gonna do is that you're just gonna chain one and at the end, because it's a corner, you wanna apply three single crochets in there. So one, so there's a lot of words but it's actually pretty simple. So the corners will have three single crochets and you just wanna equally space out your single crochet is working down. When you go and cross over stuff like this, don't go into a big gap space because that'll pull it apart. Always stay within a chain and just equally space it as you're working your way across. If it starts to ruffle out on you, it means that you're being too close together and if it starts to buckle in where it's folding in, it means that you're being too quick. So you just wanna kind of eye it up as an experienced crochet, I pretty much have this under wraps. So you may have to try a few times um, there's no magic number on how many you need. You just have to eye it up. And eventually you'll come to the other side which will be the corner. So in the corner remember it'll be chaining of three. So one, sorry, a single crochet of three. So two and three and then turn it over. Because I had you go in the back hump of the stitch, you will notice that it's gonna look like it's the top because it looks perfect. And you're just going to single crochet yourself across this and at the end you will put in three single crochets, work your way up and you'll keep on turning and then eventually you'll come across the top, single crochet and then you'll just join it with a slip stitch at the top of this and that will be the end of that. So let me see you there in just a moment. I'll just continue to work here uh, behind the scenes and just single crocheting all the way around and I'll show you how to finish off. When you get back all the way to around, remember that you've got the three single crochets already in the beginning one. Just insert the hook into the beginning and pull through and through. And now you can just safely just trim that and then take that yarn tail and just with your tapestry needle like I already showed you, just weave it into the work back and forth and then just go through your project and take out any tails. So if you've been weaving as you've been going in, you can just safely just go through your project and just snip, snip, snip and it's actually pretty good. So that's kind of it for today and uh, it's a really kind of a neat combo. Uh, because the colors is kind of busy in the, in the pattern, you don't really realize how pretty this is but this is what it would look like at the end. So until next time, it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd. So with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com.